Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is a 15 part video series showing you how to create a church. Let's get started. So to start, let's click on a new architecture template. So click on new and then scroll down right here and choose architecture template. We're using a metric template and then our units, if you type in UN, it is on millimeters. So now we start off at level one, which is the default. And then we're going to type in GR, which is architecture. And then here is the grid line. So GR is the keyboard shortcut. So we're going to start off, type in GR. Now you're, you'll be able to add in the grid line. And we click on below first and going above. You make sure that this is in 90 degrees. So we created our number one. Now, what we need to do is we need to copy the number one and then we need to create multiple copies so that we could add in multiple grid lines. So here I press escape multiple times and then select the grid lines again so I'm gonna select the grid line and then you could type in CO or you could click on copy command under modify so CO and then here it will create another dash line around it um, saying that it will be copied so it's basically symbolizes that it will be copied the whole thing so here you just need to click on multiple so that we could add multiple. If your constraint is check, you need to uncheck that. So now you need to grab it from here and pull it on the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to put it on the right side like this. It's because I'm planning to add in multiple grid lines and I'll be adding it just like this. So I'm going to type in the first one will be 4129.82 or you could just put in this. So 4129. Next will be 3889. Next will be 5939. And then so on and so forth. We're going to add in more grid line. 3880-5699-4129. And then I have my copy on the right side of my screen. That's why I need to review everything that I'm doing. So next thing is 2589-4609-2150, press enter, and then we're about to finish with the 11th and 12th. So the 11th grid line will be 1200, and 6899. So I'm happy with this. Now we could just click on escape and then escape again. So we're finished with the vertical grid line as you can see. Now we're going to add in our horizontal. So for our horizontal, um, we started with numbers and as you can see, um, Revit is smart enough to um, make it in sequence. But now, we're going to add in our horizontal grid line. So I'm going to click on grid again, or GR for short. Click on the right side, going to the left side. So once you click that, press escape and then escape again. You need to zoom in and then click on the grid bubble. So double click on that and then here we need capital A 
and then once we start adding grid lines again it will sequence it on letters so now press escape and then escape again select that grid line and then you could type in co that's for copy command under modify you need to grab it again and then pull it down so we're pulling it down now and similar to what we did I'm gonna pull it down all the way down so that um, I just need to keep on typing so the first thing that we're gonna type is 6007 2227 and then I'm gonna pull up my record here it will be 6072 and then we have one two zero eight zero enter and then we have e f and g that is four five four four and then here for the g i just need to double check this for the g it's two zero six four and then press enter so next thing i'm gonna do is i'm going to add a grid line onto the left side uh, this is where the hexagon shape will be um, so i'm gonna grab number one grid line and then i'm gonna click on copy grab it and pull it on the left side I'm going to type in 10417 and then another one would be 9976. In, ter in terms of the letters and numbers, I'm going to leave it at J and K. The reason for that is so that we could differentiate the area right here. So even though we change or we have a sequence of numbers for the vertical and letters for the horizontal it doesn't matter so because the the most important is the location wise and how you position it and how you uh, be able to uh, show the area in with different um, people so how they they will be able to read your plan so that's the most important thing so here now that I have this I'm going to select all of this so that I could basically move it out and clean it up properly so actually I'm just gonna escape click one of this 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 uh, dash line will indicate that you'll be able to move them all all together um, the reason that the F and G didn't it's probably because it's not leveled with them so at least now we'll be able to fix it so I'm gonna pull it out all the way on the outside right here we have the vertical and then we're gonna pull it down like so I like adding some space right here so that we could add in our dimensions right here and then we're gonna pull it more around here so I'm happy with this um, I'm going to select my elevation tag and then just move it around right here so that it will show everything of all the models uh, this one is good and then this one we need to move it out a bit so we're gonna move it right here if you want your dimension to be or your grid bubble to show on the other side what you have to do is you need to individually select them and then check the nick there 
so just check it out and it's a good thing so that you'll be able to see everything and it won't be hard enough to read so here I'm just checking everything okay almost there and then here we have an overlapping if you want to show them properly you can click on this add elbow it you'll be able to bend this now and you'll be able to control how it bends so that's a way of fixing everything that is overlapping so here it will be overlapping as well click that add elbow and then just have it like that so that's nice let's add in our dimension so you can type in di or that icon right there most of the time it's above here but i just put it here for m so that everybody can see it so now i'm just going to add dimension on all of my grid line so add dimensions right there and then an overall as well add dimensions right here and obviously an overall as well there we go so after this let's go to our south elevation and then here we're gonna fix this so we need to select one of them and then pull it out on each side and then here as well pull it out and then here our level 1 to level 2 um, we have it at 4000 we're gonna change this to 6000 and then from here you can select level 2 and then you can click on copy or type in 0 C C O for copy command and then here you just need to drag it up and then here we could type in 8000 so here 8000 we just need it all the way there pull it up and then now CO again let's add in another 2000 so we could put 2000 again and then that's at 10,000 so we have level 1 to 2 6000 add another 2000 and then another 2000 so our highest point is at level 4 which is 10,000 and that will be in the um, church hall or the sanctuary so now um, let's go back to level 1 and as you can see those levels are not appearing here to fix that what we need to do is go to our view and then click on floor plan and then here we have level 1 and level 4 press OK on that and then now it will appear right here we're going to use level 1 the most because um, we're going to add all our wor uh, walls first into our floor plan um, we're gonna add it from level 1 to level 2 and then from there once we add all the walls we're going to edit or select that wall again so that we could pull it up to the desired um, height that we have okay so now let's go to our architecture and then we could click on our wall or you can type in WA so once we're in our wall 
we're gonna use a 200 millimeter generic wall I know in newer Revit like Revit 2022 2023 they don't have the generic anymore so you can choose one of this and then from here you just need to edit type and then duplicate that here you can type in exterior wall number one press OK and then click on edit we just need to delete all of them except for this three these are the color boundary and whatever we add here and this is basically the structure um, so here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete all of those layers and then here as well delete that and then obviously this one is grayed out this is grayed out as well once you click it it's not something that you will be able to delete now we could just put in 200 right here and the material that we want to um, I like using gypsum wallboard for my initial wall um, material uh, just because it's white it's easy to see and I like using uh, something white on this so gypsum wallboard uh, obviously you, you can change it if you want to uh, the fun the function is yeah just take it with a uh, structure one um, it's something that you decide which one of this is uh, the most uh, appropriate for your design but for now we're gonna make it basic and just structure number one press ok and then ok again now we're gonna start off by adding a wall from number one to number two grid line but here I'm gonna add a grid or a wall the same wall exterior wall number one from here to number two and going so again um, it's we're at num uh, letter A um, before we go what I think it's easy if I go down first from A2 so let's go down there from A2 I'm gonna type in 2698 so now at least we have that wall and then just I want to touch number one after that we're at A2 and then this one let's go around 7 A7 and then we're going to go down a just a little bit around 900 and then here just hit the 8 grid line and go up to A8 again and then after that go up to the ninth grid line A9 and then going down again uh, for this one let's go down up to F so F9 and then here af after 8 9 F9 um, let's go hit number 4 so number 4 grid line so from F4 and then go back and go down to grid line G4 after that I want you to go to 2 and then from here we're going to add in walls again but we just need to um, wait for 
once we add the uh, hexagon right here. So for the hexagon, let's start off. So we have the walls already, exterior ones right here. We can type in, you can select that and type in CS. That's create similar, basically whatever that you already have here, it's easy to just type CS because it will let Revit know that I want to use that again. So what I want you to do is go to D1. So here is our D1. So click on that. I want you to click up to Jack C. And then now we're going to K D and then going down to E and then here we're going to G again so just connect it from the G and then go back here to E1 so it's easy to coordinate with you guys knowing that we have this coordination right here so that's why it's very important to set up your grid lines properly after this hexagon um, let's finish this off so CS again and I just want to add it from the middle of this wall so we're going to add this and what I want is to just have so I'm gonna give you my coordinates it's let's put it at 60 degrees and then just around 8,000 63 degrees and 8,000 and then now connect it to G2 so now everything is connected we have our hexagon um, and then here we're going to finalize this so we already set up this um, and then we're going to just connect it from the midpoint again so we're just going to look for the midpoint to make it easy for everyone to follow so we have all of this um, now I'm gonna pull this out because this will be an interior wall and we're going to extend that one later on with a interior wall so you want to make sure to be extra careful not to move it around too much like that so now we have our exterior walls ready and in the next video we're gonna continue working on this using interior wall um, and then hopefully we'll be able to finish everything thank you for watching and hope you like the video please hit like and subscribe Feel free to comment down below.